Hello YouTube! In this video, we're going to take a look at new Big 3 Touch product. It's rather not to be a essential part, but fun one. This is Ectomi. And this video is going to be quite short, because that's, there is not a lot to talk about. It's very simple setup, very simple model, but again, as I mentioned, very fun. Let's open the box. And inside of the box, you have a screen itself. This one, if I'm not mistaken, using ESP32. Yes, exactly. That's what we have here. Uh, it's a Wi-Fi uh, powered model. And this device is actually a little IoT device that connects to your printer via IP address. And I will show you how to configure it. This is super simple. And we also have little power cable here. This device is operates between 5 and 24 volts and screen resolution is 240 on 240. Quite light, I think about 15 to 20 grams. We can get into the specifications a bit more. We have USB-C cable that allows us to do initial configuration or if you have USB-C going to your tool head, you can use that to power the device. Uh, power connector. I'm using SBB2240. That's how I'm going to power the device. And we have a button here to reset, to boot. To use this device, you will need to print 3D parts. And one of the issues I have found that original CL has this part a bit tilted. I think uh, guys in Big 3 Tech Repo will fix it very soon, but you can find link into the description to the issue where the person actually listed those two parts being separate. It's printed pretty well, exactly the same size. I hope this screen is not going to limit the flow. That's at least what Big 3 Tech uh, mentioned on their website. And I don't think we have to talk more about it. Let's just try to plug it in. And now we are going to do like a full reset. I have a power bank here. Just again, simple USB-C. I'm going to reset the device now by holding a boot button. And it says it lost the connection. Here you have Victory Tech Gnome. You connect to it and automatically get the web page. And, and that web page, super simple. So you put your Wi Fi network, your Wi Fi, wi -fi password. And the IP address of the printer, in my case, 98. So after connecting the device over the Wi-Fi, you can see the device is ready to be used. I hope big 3 will give us opportunity to update the color or change the color on initial setup. Let's say I want to have purple in my case or green. I'll just pick the color from the color picker when I'm setting up the device and you have main theme to be in the color of your printer. So from that point, it is connected over our 3D printer and everything we have to do is just put the device on tool head. I'll do it uh, really quickly. So I have assembled the tool head. There's a little gap out there. A bit skeptical about airflow as I mentioned, but I think I'll just take a look. So I uh, use EBB SB plate and out here we have five volts and ground. That's what I use to power the Tommy, my LEDs and my fans out here. Overall, looks pretty clean. Yeah, it add extra weight to the dual head. Like we try to print as fast as possible on our warrants. And adding an extra weight, probably not a good idea. I probably will make second tool head just if I want to do 
speed printing. But for now, we're going to take a look at Nami. For most people, this device be kind of a childish thing where you're not really working on performance of the printer, let's say on the kinematics or anything like that, something that requires thorough engineering, but this device actually brings the soul to our printers. I don't know how to say it different way. And I have a kid and I think that device can actually motivate my uh, kid to spend more time with the device, with the printer, trying to play. It can be a good starting point for, for the engineering. Also, for me, this device makes my printer screen obsolete because usually I use it to monitor the temperature or something like that. I never use it to start the print, I use my computer. And if um, I can output more information there, that'd be super cool. After using this device for a while, I have few ideas how big 3 can actually make it more exciting. The first, we need better documentation in how to set up developer environment so I can build my custom firmware for this screen and upload it easier. Also, there is no easy access to the Gnome. If I, again, want to flash new firmware on it, I have to disassemble the whole thing. And uh, fields where I'm inserting password, IP address, just give me opportunity to color pick. It will be such a huge game changer for this product. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please consider subscribing. Like if you like this video, dislike if you don't like it. And I see you at the next one. Bye bye.